Hi guys, um, welcome to a new video and today is going to be an update of all the things I picked up in the last month. Um, of course we're in July now so um, summer's here and I hope everyone is really enjoying the nice weather. Um, because here in the UK last week we had a heat wave and it was just absolutely unbearable. Um, so um, things have cooled down since then and of course great time to listen to music as I have been doing. Um, just been spending a lot of time out in the summer and I've not been at work. But I'm still pale, obviously, um, as you can see. So, um, yeah, and we'll get started with the CDs as usual first. There isn't a massive load on this update, by the way, because these days I try not to get as much, and I really want to appreciate what I buy. Um, even though the things I'm about to show you, um, I, some of the things I haven't really listened to as much as I should. So I'm still going through a few of these things, so just bear with me. But I thought it would be a great time to do an update, um, because it's been a while, of course. So we'll get started with CDs as usual. And the first is a single, PJ Harvey, Good Fortune. Um, this was one of the singles released from the Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea era, which was um, one of my favourite albums by PJ Harvey. Because it has that American sound. Well, it was recorded in America, set in America, and... It was something very different to P.O. Java because before that, um, when she released Is This Desire and To Bring You My Love, it was a very, very British um, rock sound to it. So it's a bit of an experiment, experimental thing for it. Um, and it's a great single, really does represent the album. It's got a good music video as well of her walking along the street um, in New York. Um, and it's got two B sides off it now, and it's 66 Promises and Memphis. Um, yes, and I picked this up off eBay, it was a good price as well, and um, yeah, nice simple artwork. The next one is an album which I picked up only yesterday uh, from Poundland, and it's uh, Basement Jacks and it's Rooty. Um, this is the first Basement Jacks album I've ever bought, because recently I've been getting into a lot of their music, um, even though I've heard a lot of their songs over the years. Um, particularly during the, um, high school days, because that's when they was at their peak um, with this album as well. And I really wanted to get the Greatest Hits by them, because I know that's a really good Greatest Hits album released about 10 years ago. But I just couldn't find it anywhere yesterday, but I found this one. Um, and the reason why I bought this um, is because it's got a few of my favourite songs by Basement Jacks on this album anyway. And that's Where's Your Head At and Do Your Thing. And... Basically, Jet Basement Jacks were like a, a duo, a bit similar to like, you know, Pet Shop Boys, um, where they produce loads of songs and sometimes they get certain artists to sing on um, the songs, uh, particularly females, which is one of the reasons why I love them. And I also like um, how on a lot of the ba Basement Jacks singles and albums, always release vibrant, colourful uh, covers with the use of animals as well. Like on one of the covers, it's, there's an ostrich. On another one, it's like a, um, a monkey. Uh, this one's a baboon. Um, and on another one, there's like birds and things like that. So it's a really interesting, um, good art style as well. And I've, they've always used that font, which I love. And um, it's a good album. Uh, really good for parents, considering how um, much good songs on here. Uh, the first track's called Romeo. And it's one of those songs I haven't heard for years and years. So it's really blasted the past down memory lane with that one. Um, so it's a feel-good album. Yeah, I recommend this. Next is um, an album picked up in a charity shop a few weeks ago, and it's Shakespeare's Sister, Hormone of the Yours, uh, their second album, I believe. Um, I used to have this album about five years ago, when Shakespeare's Sister was popular again, when um, Cher Lloyd sang Stay on The X Factor, even though this version is a lot better. Um, and that's produced a lot of interest back then. But... Uh, then, after that, I lost the album. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I accidentally donated it to a charity shop or um, I don't know if someone accidentally had it off me. I'm not sure. But I re-bought it a few weeks ago. And, um, yeah, it's a really great album. Because um, what I like about this album in, in particular, um, it had a good singles run off here, even though a couple of the singles should have been a lot bigger than they should. Um, particularly Goodbye Cruel World and Hello Turn Your Radio On, which are probably the uh, best songs on the album, along with Stay. And um, I love all the music videos as well from this era because it was filmed um, in black and white, like um, old golden era Hollywood films. 
and um, at the beginning of each film they have like a famous quote um, which was really interesting so it was very iconic and um, I think this era should have been a lot bigger and it's unfortunate that Marcel Detroit, um, the taller member there, left after this album because there was like, you know, cat fight um, arguments between the members, which is a pity. But um, it's a good album and I do recommend this if you see it anywhere. Next is one I picked up from HMV a while ago and it's Lights, The Listening. And this is her debut album. Um, I really like Lights. I've got her third album, Little Machines, it's called, I think. Um, yeah, really good electronic album, and I thought I'd go back and um, listen to her debut one. And um, yeah, I've listened to the first half quite a few times, um, then the second half. And it's a really good album. I must warn you though that um, a lot of the songs have got like the same tempo. The, there's not many upbeat songs, and um, it just goes at the same sort of pace. But that's not always a bad thing, because um, a lot of the songs are really beautiful. Um, some of them are quite catchy as well, and um, stunning voice. It's it's a, it's a bit like um, I like to say a really good Britney Spears like style album with good electronic uh, music involved. Um, although it's not fair to compare females to females because she's a talented um, woman. Um, and I am look. I'll probably have to get the second album because I'm enjoying it that much. Favorite songs are Savia. Uh, River and Ice. Um, Ice is one of the more catchier songs on the album. So, yeah, that's that one. And this is one I picked up in the shop a few weeks ago. And I, the only reason I picked it up because it was such a good price. And um, I'll probably um, enjoy it. I'll have to listen to it properly soon. And it's Blur's new album, The Magic Whip. Um, I've heard good reviews about this album. I've only heard one song so far. And it was when they performed tier, uh, on Tier 5 Friday a few weeks ago. And it sounded really good. Um, it sounded just as good as like the Park Life stuff, um, so I'm definitely going to have to give this album a good listen soon. Give it a good chance to, you know, um, for me to remember because I don't want to rush this at all. Because um, um, it's not fair just rushing it. So yeah, looking forward to that one. Next is one I picked up in the record shop and it's Suzanne Vega, um, Days of Your Hand. This is her third album I believe. Um, this was the only one I could find because I was on a hunt for some Su 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 Suzanne Vega albums. Sorry, eat my words. Um, and the only song that I know of this particular album is Tired of Sleeping, which is one of the more easier radio friendly songs, I like to say. Um, I like the artwork as well, even though it does remind me a little bit of Little Earthquakes by Tori Amos. But it's not fair to criticise this because this was released before then. Uh, 1990 this was released so this album's quite old like 25 years um, but I'm looking forward to it I'm still listening to the Great Sit so I haven't had a good chance to listen to this one yet but I'm looking forward to it because um, like I said I'm, I'm enjoying the Great Sit and I hope there's no filler on this I'm sure there won't be though next is one I picked up from HMV uh, very recently it's the best of Susie and the Banshees um, great band um, great um, discography um, it's basically a good collection of um, random singles even though they had a lot more singles um, than what's on this particular CD but um, if you're a beginner to Sushi and Avanches, um try this because um, it's a great beginner even though I've had this on my iPod for a few years now I've never had the CD but I just wanted to get it anyway because um, it's good to listen to every now and again my favourite songs are um, Cities in Dust Peekaboo, Kiss Them For Me, um, Israel as well, um, Arabian Nights and The Killing Jar. Particularly, um, yeah, some of the more lesser known singles for some reason. I like the stuff they did in the mid 80s when they did that covers album. And um, Creep Show, I think it's called, or Peep Show, one of the two. I've got an annex up. That's good, the album with Peekaboo on. That's one of my favourite Susie and Avanches albums because it was just so well made. And um, on the same day, I decided to pick up another Susie and Avanches CD and it's her debut album, The Scream. Um, even though I don't know any of the stuff off this, I have had this, a listen to this a while ago though on YouTube because um, I think there's like a few songs off this album on there and it really does remind me like a horror film, you know, the experimental punk. Um, slightly gothy sound to this album which I love 
but it's not too in your face if you know what I mean um, and I just love the artwork as well it's, it's really really good and um, I'm definitely going to um, listen to this on a dark night I should have listened to it the other night because we had a storm and um, it would have been good setting but um, I didn't but um, yeah I will listen to this one soon so we'll get um, onto the vinyls now um, there's four here the first one is one I shown in my last video which was an unboxing and it's American Doll Posse by Toy Amos which is beautiful um, yeah great album uh, cost an arm and a leg but it was worth it considering how much I love Toy Amos um, yeah fantastic um, I might as well not say anything because I shown my last uh, video with this telling how much I loved it so yeah um, next one is one I picked up um, a few days later actually and this was the only one I was missing and it's Toy Amos Night of Hunters, uh, released in 2011. Uh, I picked this up off Amazon. Um, I paid quite a good price. Um, I paid £17. And the reason why I wanted to get it now was before, in case it got rare, because sometimes an album can be a reasonable price. And then um, as time goes on, it becomes more and more rare and more expensive. So I thought I'd just get it now straight away. Even though I was in no rush to get it, because this isn't my favourite Toy Amos album. That being said, um, I've had listened to this one a bit more recently because I wanted to give this one a bit more of a chance because I don't think I gave uh, this album much recognition when I first heard it, along with the locks I'm, I'm, I'm abnormally attracted to sing. So um, I thought I'd go back to listen to this on vinyl and it sounds amazing because of course it was um, like a classical influenced album and when that's played on vinyl really loud, it just um it, it's just flawless what can i say and um this is a gatefold vinyl even though it's not the most interesting gatefold so you open it up and it's just um picture of a tree and information about the album itself um but it's got a nice material on it as well which i love and at each sleeve it's just basically um, photos and lyrics from the album which of course is good for any uh Tori Aramis fan and it has nice vinyl as well been well looked after which of course is important so um yeah i'm very glad i've got this now this is the only one i was missing i've got all the toy MS albums on vinyl um studio albums as well because i know there's like singles and um the live album on vinyl but um it doesn't matter because i've got these so yeah that's another one Next is um, an old one which I picked up yesterday. It's Results by Liza Minnelli. Um, this album is really good. Even though this is in like really cheap packaging. Even though it's released in 1989, um, I shouldn't complain too much. And it was a good price, but um, it's a great album. Basically, when you think of Liza Minnelli, you think of Cabaret and all the you know Broadway stuff she did like years ago. Um, this isn't that at all this is pet shop boys produced album so it's very electronic very 80s um slightly experimental and um Liza sounds absolutely amazing on this good singles one as well the lead single losing my mind is amazing i'm still listening to it now and i'm not gotten sick of it yet um killer single so give it a listen you, you just might like it I, I really do recommend it um of all the stuff I've shown in this update, I think this is probably the one um, that I would most um, recommend to you. Uh, this, Losing My Mind by Liza Minnelli. And um, listen to it a few times because it will grow on you. Um, yeah, other good songs. So Sorry I, so sorry I Said. Um, good tempo ballad. Even though the first time I heard it, I thought it was boring. Um, another song called Love Paint, which is um, very good as well. Um, some other good songs, it's just a really good album, I just love the sound of it and um, nice artwork as well, just the black and white image. And the very last vinyl is Florence and the Machine, How Big, How Blue, How Beautiful, the third album and it is beautiful. I picked this up a, a while ago, not long after the last update actually, so um, I've, I've been listening to this album more and more and I've booked tickets to see her in September, which I'm really excited about, um, standing. Um, so I am a big fan of this album a lot more than Lungs and Ceremonials which I love but I love this even more 
just love the imagery and everything, the sound, the songs. I've been listening to the second half a lot more recently as well, particularly um, Long and Lost, which has become a recent favourite of mine, and St. Jude's. And when I first bought this, I thought it would be a gatepole vinyl, but unfortunately it's just a simple uh, vinyl itself. But it has two beautiful sleeves with the photos of her, you know, standing there and when it turns it's parallel with her standing like, a, it's like a small coliseum where it's all grass and everything, and with like a little pond area, um, which is nice. And there, sitting on the bed, um, well, almost naked, <laughs> and there along the shore. And there's this vinyl. And I just love the imagery from the album. I like the, you know, the pre half light um, photos for it and everything. Particularly on the deluxe edition of the album because it has loads of photos in there, which I really do recommend. And um, it's shaping up to be a really successful era because it has gone really high in other countries. I just wish the singles had got more recognition and higher charting positions. But of course, it doesn't always have to be the case. As long as the album is successful, then that's fine. We're really looking forward to seeing it live. Great album, love it. And the very last thing I'll show, it's um, a programme. Because last night I went to see Fleetwood Mac. The On With The Show tour. I seen them last night at the um, Genton Arena in Birmingham. And um, it was an amazing night. Um, fantastic. I was just amazed how well they played. I knew they was going to be good, but when you see them live, like right there playing, the sounds in tune. Um, they look like they're having a good time as well. Particularly Mick, Mick Fleetwood on the drums, he was in the zone. Um, Stephen Hicks was in perfect tune. It looked amazing as well. Um, Christine McVeigh, she's seventy one, nearly seventy two. I just, it's just amazing. Um, John McVeigh, he, didn't really see, he was a bit in the shadows a lot. I think that's more of his thing anyway, because he's probably the most, you know, mysterious member, I like to say. And of course, Lin Lindsay Buckingham, he's a pro. Uh, oh, he, was, he was just on fire last night, and the crowd loved him, um, as mu I'm sure he, as they did in the other shows. So I picked up the programme, because I love picking up programmes. I was going to get a t-shirt, but they're quite expensive, and of course t-shirts don't always last forever anyway, but these do. These programmes, I just love programmes, and it has some really stunning ph photography in here. Because um, I wasn't originally going to get this until I saw someone sitting next to me holding one of these, and um, I noticed how good the photos were, so I just bought one <laughs> very quickly. Yeah, just amazing. Um, my favourite songs performed live, um, I think Landslide was probably the one for the night. Um, it might, I love the song anyway, but after last night, I love it even more now, and I've been listening to it. And um, Gypsy as well, because I like the story Stephen Hicks told um, about Gypsy before the song came on. That was really interesting. Um, and it, I, I love Little Lies and Everywhere, that was uh, like two of my favourite songs, but... I think some of the other songs sounded better last night, in my opinion. Um, I think um, Go Your Own Way, that's when the crowd went wild. Um, everyone was just up at their feet having a dance and really singing, belting it out. So um, it was a really good night and it was well worth the money. Because um, it was probably the most expensive concert I've ever purchased. But, you know, amazing. I would love to see them again, hopefully. Um, even though there's more artists I want to see first. But yeah, great night. And um, if anyone else has seen them, uh, comment. Um, let me know your take on it. And um, that is it, everyone, for this update. I hope you're having a good summer, like I said earlier. And um, my next update will probably be in the month. But I'll try to see if I can do some sort of uh, another video. I'm going to be doing another update to Toyama's collection soon as well. Now I've got those two vinyls, so uh, stay tuned for that. And um, speak to you soon, guys.